SMEs, what are they? And how do you lever your relationship with them? My name is Melinda Cologne, and I'm a strategic marketer and mentor of Fortis OVM and Thrive Build. And today we're going to be talking about subject matter experts or SMEs. Now, depending on who you talk to, you might hear different stories, like your subject matter experts are your internal clients, or your subject matter experts are in a different department, don't bug them, don't bother them, I don't even ask them for anything. And at the end of the day, I have a different thinking, a way of thinking about the relationship between a subject matter expert and a marketing profession. Well, the first thing that's important for me to point out is the big 50-foot crane view. Now, if you've seen my previous video about the 50-foot crane view, you'll see how important this is right now. So the 50-foot crane view basically is a understanding of the traditional build process and how the ultimate client, aka Chad, really comes in and oversees this huge project that expands between 48 to sometimes longer months of just managing, planning, designing, constructing this facility, this structure that's going to play an impact in the user experience, whether it's drivers or facility users. So at the end of the day, what does a subject matter expert do? The subject matter experts are the technical staff members who have seniority, who have the years of experience and knowledge to really lead a team. They are commonly known for their abilities to really understand the technical speak or design speak that go right, right over our heads. They're the ones that we ask for help and guidance and proposal de delivery qualifications or to connect and build relationships with clients and decision makers. But the other thing that I want to share with you is how important it is to be a strong and strategic marketer in the AEC industry. For SMEs, they do the work. And most of the time in most firms across the country, they're doing the work and they're also selling. So this is called the selling seller doer model, which means that not only are these a technical expert that are working on the specific, you know, projects, doing the engineering, doing the design, they're actually the sellers, which are building business development relationships with partners and future clients and existing ones. And the marketers in their role is as important, in my opinion, as their subject matter experts. Nowadays, it's really challenging to be strategic. In fact, everybody looks really good. They figured it out. InDesign is the tool to use, and they've hired really great graphic designers to figure it out. But it's not just the graphics. It's not just the aesthetics. It's actually the story that the ultimate client, aka Chad, cares about most. And how do you write that as a subject matter expert? It's really challenging. And if you speak to any subject matter expert, you'll find that it's really challenging for them to be able to speak about what they do in a way that makes sense to every normal person. And that's what makes them so amazing. And every type of amazing minded person has a hard time really telling you what they actually do. That's great because they think it's normal. As a marketer, because we have an understanding of creativity and emotional intelligence and psychology, we engage with putting in the right aesthetics with the right messaging. And why it's important is because we help win the work. So we help win the work for the subject matter expert to work on. Do you get that? So let's take that marketer out of it. Not only is he the seller and the doer, but he becomes the marketer. That is an overwhelming task at, at its best. So we need to bring the marketer back into the role to help alleviate the pressures of selling so that the subject matter expert can focus on doing more of the doing. So the marketer has a very important role. And instead of thinking about that there is a client relationship internally, why don't we start thinking about a partnership internally? Why? If you go to a store or if you go to a restaurant or anytime there's a client or customer relationship, there seems to be like this thin veil between the two of you. There's professionalism, of course, 
but it's almost like there's a no touch policy that there's not an ability for you to actually have transparent dialogues and conversations to work on one solution together. It's usually a give it to me. I don't do anything. I wait for you. And that, in my opinion, after years of believing that, I've realized that it's toxic to think that way. And this might be a controversial message. And to be honest, that's okay. Because what I'm thinking and I'm hoping that this helps you really make strong, solid relationships with your SMEs. Thinking of them as clients only puts them on a pedestal and we don't want to have that. We want to be able to come to the table together and actually sit at the table together and coordinate and identify ways that we can use our strengths to respond to our clients' needs. So it's not about us. It's not about our SMEs. It's about our clients, our chats. So our SMEs are really responsible for building those relationships and letting us know what does it mean to be an architect or an engineer or a contractor? And we got to take those words and put them in ways that people like our SMEs that are not like our SMEs can understand. We have to allow the juices, the energy, the technical speak live on. And so that we can focus on creating something magical and really understanding. Not to mention, it helps with branding so that there's consistent messaging throughout. I can't, can't tell you how many times I've gone to a chain restaurant and gone to multiple chain restaurants like an Olive Garden. And every Olive Garden that I go to has a different experience. When I find that, I'm usually not feeling so great about the, the food either. Like, is there something off? I mean, I know what to expect in an Olive Garden. I know that there's supposed to be three breadsticks at the table, not four, <laughs> I, for two people. I know that they always have specific pink lemonade on the re on the menu, as well as their chicken gnocchi, which is my favorite soup. If I go to another restaurant and I have a chicken gnocchi and there's like nothing but the soup and no chicken nor gnocchi, I am hesitant to buy anything else or enjoy the rest of my meal because something changed in the formula. This is branding. This is what people say without words and when, when you're not around. This is what people say with words when you're not around. And so the subject matter expert is so busy doing the work that he needs our help as marketers to be partners so that we can take on that responsibility of streamlining our messaging and our branding. So how do you build and how do you leverage a relationship with them? Like, how do you build a relationship that is strong and really thoughtful? Not only that it's beneficial for you in your career, but also beneficial for the subject matter expert. Well, having conversations about things they love. <laughs> I know it's as simple as that. I can't tell you how many times I've had great conversations with subject matter experts that turned out to be full of stories that I can use for proposals to remind them during presentation practice and also brochures and materials. When they're saying, hey, I'm gonna go to a meeting with a client, I'll see you later or tomorrow I have to deal with that between different OAC meetings. I say, don't forget to mention that story about the X thing on the Y. And they love that. They love knowing that somebody is on their side that is supporting them as a partner. And I mean, wouldn't we all want that? Is to have that type of reminder and that support that, hey, somebody cares about what we're doing outside of the big projects that we end up delivering. So another way that I leverage my relationship with subject matter experts is when I'm building these relationships where they're telling me about what they're doing, I ask questions. I'm not afraid to ask questions. I'm not afraid to be the person that doesn't understand how to design a building or how to design a HVAC system. There's nothing wrong with asking questions when it doesn't have anything to do with your scope of work. And even if it does, ask the right people. So when it comes to their side of their expertise and being their subject matter experts, it's really powerful to see when they get to ask you questions and they, they see you as a a notable subject matter expert, someone who understands marketing, proposal development, 
and in engaging with brand copy. I have been that person and it feels really great. It feels really great. And not only that, it infuses the idea of a partnership even more. And it feels so organic, natural, and it's just a great experience to have. And I hope that you're having that. And you might, and you might not. And you might need some guidance with how to create those great subject matter expert relationships. Now, people are people and not everybody you're gonna get along with the same way. You might be able just to find one or two things that you both have in common and just call it quits. And that's great because you're trying, you're making an effort. And the most important thing that I say to you is to make sure that you're consistent with yourself. As long as your work product is consistent, quality, your messaging, as well as how you show up for your organization, then you start to build, to develop this respect and understanding that you're the go-to resource for marketing and brand development for your organization. It naturally happens. You don't have to ask for it and you definitely don't have to beg for it. It happens naturally by just doing what you're supposed to do consistently. Now, as far as the subject matter expert and the marketer relationship, I definitely feel like it's a partnership. Instead of thinking of it like they work for us and or they we work for them, it starts to get really grainy. And to be honest, it just does the wrong thing to your mindset. So we're gonna start focusing on being partners and really standing up and stepping up to the role of being a partner of a subject matter expert because we are subject matter ex experts and really filling those positions because we can. So if you have any questions about that or need some guidance or just talk through that, make sure to email us at support EEC because we want to support you and we want to make sure you feel supported. All right, guys, this is Melinda Cohen. Thank you so much for choosing us for this time and see you next time.